Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and not only am I a fish hoarder, but I'm also, I also love a good bargain. I was out getting my hair cut today and I drove past the nursery and it said end of season sale. So I had to stop in there because a lot of times this time of year you can find uh, the whiskey barrels or half whiskey barrels or any of the resin containers marked down really, really far. Um, I didn't really luck out in that regard, but I bought a ton of cool perennial plants um, that were all marked down from like $20 a piece to like $3 a piece. The little air plants were a dollar a piece. Uh, potting soil was marked down by 70%. And while I was there, I picked up a little Venus flytrap. Uh, my daughter is taking honors biology this year and her teacher expressed an interest in working with carnivorous plants. Um, now I could have pulled one from my ball garden, but it's done so well out there, I just didn't want to mess with it. And so when I stopped by this nursery and saw they had them, I just bought him one and figured I'd set up a little pot for him and we'll see how it goes. And I thought we could talk about that together. But I then stopped by Home Depot and this is where the bargain hunting really comes in. At Home Depot, they have all these really cool uh, cloches and glass terrariums marked down to like five or ten dollars there's a whole bunch of sizes and I bought one of each because I love a bargain um, now I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with them yet I thought it might be a fun project to do with my kids um, I do have a lot of air plants I have orchids I have violets obviously the carnivorous plants uh, I have some nepenthes some tropical carnivorous plants um, so at, at some point in the future I'll make some of this stuff with them. Um, my, my older daughter, well, and the younger one too, both really enjoy succulents. Um, and I have some tropical succulents outside that I'm gonna have to move in sooner rather than later. Maybe we'll do something with that, but let me know in the comments below if that's a project you guys would like to see me do. But for today, we're gonna focus on this little Venus flytrap. Uh, now this was sold underneath this cup and that's how you usually see them in the store, which is fine. Um, the thing that I don't like is that a lot of times these are sold um, in the wrong soil and they're set up like little plugs so there's no room for them to really grow and they're kind of stunted but being kept in that little plastic container. Uh, Venus flytraps absolutely require a cool down period so they are often also sold as house plants and they're really not very good house plants. And one of the things that I talked to her teacher about is that this plant is gonna need a cool down period. Now you can achieve that by putting them in a garage, um, you know, a, a sheltered place in your yard, or you can strip them down to bare roots and put them in your refrigerator. Uh, I just put mine outside. They do great and uh, it's easy. So at least this growing instruction does say to give it distilled water. I use rainwater, but rainwater or distilled water is absolutely required. Um, and they do like things kind of wet, so a nice, well-draining soil is best. Um, so I grabbed my blasting sand, which is an inert sand, and some soaked peat and made up a mix. And I'm just gonna take this pot apart and repot it into a bigger one uh, in the hopes that her her class will have better success with it. Um, so let's get started. I'll zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. This is my potting mix. Again, it's half uh, peat and half inert sand. Uh, Venus flytraps, like most carnivorous plants, get all of their nutrition for the most part from digesting bugs. So you want the soil to be basically inert. This little guy doesn't look too bad. Um, I picked the one that appeared the healthiest at the nursery. Um, but I want to give it a bigger pot, one that I can live in for several years. So we're going to start by just tipping it upside down. Now this does look as though it's in peat, which is not horrible. Um, since this, this teacher is brand new to carnivorous plants, I wanted to use a mix that was going to set them up for success. And sometimes using a single ingredient potting mix for these guys can be a little less well draining. You can see that this is absolutely saturated, which is fine. Um, we're just going to gently break off all this old soil. And yeah, you can see it's wrapped in long fiber sphagnum and planted like a plug, which is what I figured. There's also a lot of old dead traps that we can gently pull off. 
in order to give this plant the best chance for success. It's actually not a bad little plant. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. It looks like it's been at the nursery for quite some time. Um, they had a whole bunch of different ones. Most of them didn't look super hot, so I only bought this one. Now, yeah, let's see, this is root bound, um, but we can save it. In an ideal world, you would repot these guys during dormancy, not during the growing season. Since this was being kept inside, I'm not sure that it'll really matter. You can see the roots. It's got a decent root stock. We're just going to pull off. Oh, look, baby plant. We're going to pull off some of these damaged or dead pitchers and separate out the plants. Now, when you're pulling these off, you want to pull up so that it doesn't break apart the entire uh, mass of plant. We're going to discard this old soil and not reuse it. Um, give this plant the best shot possible. There's actually a ton of baby plants in this, which is pretty cool. I'm going to leave as much of this together in one large clump as I can for the classroom. There are a ton of baby plantlets. Maybe we'll throw one or two out in my bog to see how it does. All right. So that's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plants from that one little $5 um, special Venus flytrap from the store. Uh, so I've just gathered together a six inch pot. And again, I mixed half blasting sand with half pre-soaked peat. And what I like to do is fill the pot about halfway full. Now, if I had perlite, it would have been a good idea to include it, but I, I'm out, so we'll just have to do without. I fill it most of the way full, and then I'll take the largest plant. And I have a little chopstick, and I'll poke a little hole to put the roots in. And then I'll hold this in place and put the rest of the soil around it. Pressing it down firmly. You want it to be nice and firm, but you don't want it to be packed. Now, I find this is easiest to do with the soil pre-moistened, but not wet. Now, again, the, the pot has holes in the bottom, so it can drain. And I'll advise him to keep this in the tray method with some water underneath. Um, I'm, that's my cat. I'm going to go ahead and plant this one as well in here. And since I already have the soil in, I'm just going to take this little plastic chopstick, poke a hole, set it in there, and again, press the soil mix around it. And I might put one more in here for him too. You want them to be plant, planted pretty shallow. Um, as Venus flytraps can be prone to rot. And that's really all there is to it. It's pretty darn simple. Clean up my mess, I'll stick this guy out in my bog garden and we'll take a closer look. Now my bog is doing really awesome. Um, I've added a couple new sundews. You see this purpurea here has gotten really big. It's one of my fly traps there. Cape sundew there. Um, some of the pitchers have gotten huge, and all in all, I've been really, really stoked. Um, there's actually some really cool little volunteer baby sundews. Let's see if I can find one to show you guys. Right here. Go see how tiny that thing is. It's like the diameter of a quarter. There's like five or six. I'm just gonna poke a hole in the soil here and put in this last fly trap. Again, just pressing. And we'll see how that bad boy does right there. Now while out of the bog, I grabbed some of the live sphagnum moss from my garden and just put it on the top of the soil here. Hopefully her teacher likes this and it does well for him. Now let's just take a look at one of these little Crochets. This one's called a capsule terrarium. Uh, I believe this one was four dollars. And I thought this one in particular might be good for my kids. Isn't that neat? 
Now in the picture it has some air plants and some Spanish moss, some little decoration. I think they're really cute and I think it could be a really fun project to play around with. Um, anyway, make sure you guys are checking your local garden centers if it is getting to be fall where you live because this is when we get all the best deals for the next season of summer tubbing. As always, let me know below if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or questions. And if you'd like to see me do something with any of these terrariums that I bought, I bought four bargain shopping. 